please, let's take our seats. Thank you very much. Mr. President, on behalf of the people of Kenya, the government of the Republic of Kenya, and my own behalf, I wish to welcome you and your delegation to Kenya. You are among us brothers, you are among us sisters. Your visit to our country, Your Excellency, your state visit has been long in coming. We have been waiting, and uh, we are grateful that finally um, you have come, and we are delighted that you are among us. This visit, Your Excellency, affirms the cordial relationship between Kenya and South Africa and our shared desire to deepen the bonds between our two countries. The visit is instrumental in developing permanent dialogue between our two countries and building on our common principles and shared values. Kenya considers South Africa as one of her most dependable and strategic ally in this continent. We have noted the successful mid-term review of the inaugural Joint Commission for Cooperation held on the 6th and 7th of November this year to review the implementation of agreed areas of cooperation that was done in Nairobi. Kenya and South Africa have had good relations since South Africa defeated apartheid in 1994. The ties between our two nations continue to grow in all aspects of development and especially in trade. And the two countries have ratified the Africa Continental Free Trade Area, emphasizing our shared commitment to the promotion of intra-Africa trade. Today, Your Excellency, you and I are delighted to have presided over the signing of four instruments of cooperation that will play a definitive role in the Kenya-South Africa relations. They are three memoranda of understanding and one agreement on cooperation in the fields of correctional services, cooperation in the fields of housing and human settlement, cooperation between Kenya School of Government and the National School of Government from South Africa, and the agreement on audiovisual co-production. On behalf of the people of Kenya, I express Kenya's appreciation on the progress we have made in the long-awaited visa-free regime between Kenya and South Africa. From January 1, Your Excellency, we will have a different regime, thanks to your personal intervention on this matter and the wealth of experience that have been brought on board by your officials. Kenyans holding ordinary passports will be allowed to enter South Africa on a visa-free um, regime for up to 90 days per calendar year. The two countries have also agreed on a return policy when immigration laws and regulations are breached to make sure that bad elements that try to infiltrate our borders are dealt with firmly and decisively. President Ramaphosa and I have also agreed to develop a sustainable mechanism to identify, monitor, and resolve non-tariff barriers that limit the trade potential between our two countries. We can only reap the full benefits of the MOUs and agreements we have signed through the full and effective implementation of all the undertakings we have committed ourselves to. It is important that we continue to demonstrate the viability and usefulness of the JCC mechanism in improving the quality of our relations. We are concerned 
over the continuing threats to international peace and security, particularly conflicts in the Horn of Africa, the Great Lakes region, and the Sahel. These conflicts cause suffering, disorder, and lead to unsafe migration and weakening of states. Your Excellency, I want to thank you specifically for providing the necessary leadership that saw the resolution at least at the technical level and now that implementation will be carried out on the matters between Tigray and the government of Ethiopia. Kenya and South Africa commit to play our roles in the pursuit of sustainable peace and security in Africa and the world through the Africa Peace, the Africa Union Peace and Security Council and UN Security Council frameworks. At the continental level, we lord the just concluded agreement between Ethiopia government and the Tigray People's Liberation Front, brokered by the Africa Union and mediated by President Oletsuguno Pasanjo and Uhuru Kenyatta and former Deputy President of South Africa, Pumphile Mlambo Nkuka. We appeal to all parties to ensure the full and comprehensive implementation of the agreement. Kenya and South Africa recognize climate change as a definitive challenge of our time. We reiterate the implementation of the national determined contributions, including adaptation and mitigation efforts and delivery of finance as agreed in COP27. We urge developing nations to meet their obligations and work with other parties to ensure swift implementation of the climate change finance delivery plan. I congratulate you, President Ramaphosa, on the launch of the, of the Just Transition Framework for South Africa during the sixth meeting of the Presidential Climate Commission held on 27 May 2022. President Ramaphosa's leadership continues to steer South Africa to greater heights of economic development. Working together is the only way we can achieve shared desire for closer bilateral cooperation and a stronger strategic partnership. There is no doubt, Mr. President, that we have made good strides during this visit and we look forward to achieving even more in the near future. I thank you, Your Excellency, Mr. President, for the state visit and convey the best wishes of peace, stability to the government and the great people of South Africa. Thank you and God bless you, Mr. President. Your Excellency, Dr. William Ruto, President of the Republic of Kenya, members of your government and uh, the delegation from South Africa, members of the media and uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to start off by thanking you most sincerely for inviting me and my delegation to come on a state visit to Kenya. This in many ways demonstrates the very deep and strategic relationship between South Africa and Kenya. And I'd also like to reiterate our congratulations to you for your election as president of this wonderful country, Kenya, and wish you the very best as you lead this great nation to greater heights. We have just concluded meaningful discussions and very productive and constructive talks which have taken forward our cooperation and relationship in several areas of mutual interest. This visit has once again reaffirmed that our bilateral relations are based on a sound foundation of mutual respect, shared values, and friendship, 
and are also based on our democratic values. These principles will un undoubtedly continue to serve us well into the future, especially in times of global uncertainty. We use our discussion, both our tete a tete and our official talks in the presence of our respective delegations to take stock of the current state of our bilateral relations while also exploring other areas of mutual interest and possible cooperation. And we recognize that the wonderful foundation that exists between our two countries gives rise to enormous opportunities that our two countries should capitalize on. We also witnessed the signing of agreements and memoranda of our understanding, as you correctly said, and this builds on the other agreements that we had signed in the past. We are committed to ensure that the agreements and the memorandum of understanding that we have signed now and in the past will be implemented fully. You and I also took opportunity to discuss the thorny issue between our two countries of visas between South Africa and Kenya with a view of allowing Kenyans to be able to visit South Africa on a free visa basis, that is without having visas. We agreed that indeed Kenyans should be able to visit South Africa without requiring them to have visas and that this dispensation will commence on the 1st of January in 2023, and that our officials will speed up the processes of putting this into effect, and that this dispensation will be available to Kenyans for a 90-day period in a given year, meaning that, yes, can use the 90 days, 10 days, 20 days, or whatever, for the full year, Kenyans will have a full 90 days to be able to visit South Africa and we will be able to review this and get reports from our ministers within a year and see how this is functioning. This will also be underpinned by other processes that we have agreed should take place, close monitoring of the implementation of this process and also be able to have a return policy of those, as we call them, elements that would be undesirable uh, to be able to be returned uh, to uh, Kenya. And this, in many ways, just strengthens the relationship between South Africa and Kenya, but more importantly, the people-to-people -people contact, because as you and I observed, Kenyans and South Africans have multiplicities of relations, both business, social, uh, communal, uh, at a relatives level. They want to be able to travel, and uh, tourism also between our two countries will be greatly enhanced uh, through this. South Africa and Kenya are confronted by a number of challenges, almost similar challenges of poverty, inequality, and unemployment. Since 2020, this South Africa has been implementing what we crafted as the Economic Reconstruction and Recovery Plan to lift our economy out of a prolonged period of slow growth but a period that was also negatively impacted by COVID-19. This is not dissimilar to Kenya's recovery plan with its six core pillars of agriculture, focusing on micro-enterprises, 
small and medium enterprises, housing and settlement, health care, and the digital superhighway and the creative economy, as well as the environment and climate change. There are definite opportunities for South Africa and Kenya to share experiences and good practice in the implementation of these various economic opportunities that are given rise to by the plans that we both have adopted. We are therefore pleased that uh, the business forum that is taking place at this moment during this state visit will also be exploring a plethora of opportunities between our two respective businesses. And we are delighted that businesses from South Africa, business people have, from South Africa have traveled in their numbers to come here both from the private sector and the public sector. And that in this endeavor, they are also joined by business people from uh, your beautiful country, Kenya. This in many ways gives an opportunity to make new contacts. And as I often say, they make contacts and hopefully they will move to contracts as they establish new business undertakings uh, in various sectors of our respective economies. As leading economies in our regions, Kenya is a leading economy in East Africa and so is South Africa in Southern Africa. We have demonstrated a firm commitment to sustainably increase volumes of trade and foster greater investment in each other's economy. We were particularly pleased that our various ministers who straddle agriculture, trade and industry, environment, and creative sectors have, were, have been very busy looking at the various opportunities with a view of enhancing growth that can come from that. We also, during our discussions, focus on several issues affecting our beloved continent, including the situation in the Democratic Republic of Congo, Ethiopia, as well as Western Sahara. We agree on the need for peace and stability in our continent and the ending of conflicts within and between states. Besides destroying lives and livelihoods, these conflicts greatly retard progress in addressing important social and economic issues. We have therefore agreed that we need to remain focused on issues affecting our regions and our continent and not be distracted by other global matters that are not of our making. We advocate for African solutions for African problems. We took time to thank you for the role that you have played as Kenya in helping to resolve the conflict in Ethiopia between the Ethiopian government and the Tigrayans by deploying former President Uhuru Kenyatta to be joined by former President Olesen Obasanjo of Ethiopia and former Deputy President Pumzi Lemlambogluka in fostering a peace uh, uh, between uh, the two belligerent parties. We were grateful that uh, there was an understanding and a peace agreement that was reached, and we're glad that Kenya did play a very key role in enabling that to happen. And this lives up to having African solutions for African problems, because we have the necessary expertise, experience, the wisdom, as well as institutions and leaders who are able to help 
our continent to resolve problems affecting Africa. Kenya and South Africa share a common commitment to strengthen and capacitate the African Union to carry out its core mandate of social and economic development of the African people. We have called for global solidarity, fairness, and a rules-based international system and the reinforcement of multilateralism, which Kenya and, and South Africa support greatly. And Kenya and South Africa are aligned on the need also to reform the United Nations system, in particular the United Nations Security Council and the transformation of institutions of global governance. You and I have just returned from COP27 in Sharma El Sheikh in Egypt, where both of us and a number of African countries flew the African flag with regard to ensuring that there is a just transition, as uh, many of our countries on the African continent are currently suffering a great deal from the ravages of climate change. As you correctly pointed out, the droughts that Kenya is experiencing now are unprecedented. And similarly, the floods and the droughts that South Africa is currently experiencing now are unprecedented and this just goes to show that climate change is serious but at the same time we need to make sure that the more developed economy countries that have contributed greatly to the climate damage should be the ones who carry the burden of making sure that the loss and the damage that developing economy countries like South Africa and Kenya are properly compensated and that those countries live up to the commitments that they have made. And thank you very much for congratulating South Africa for reaching the Just Energy Transition Agreement or deal with the, the five countries. But we also are firm in supporting similar deals to be reached with countries that are currently experiencing real great difficulties when it comes to climate change, countries like your own country, Kenya. It is our hope and conviction that our relations, President Ruto, will deepen and that cooperation will grow to cover a greater diversity of areas and as you and I said, we've just scratched the surface when it comes to opportunities that lie out there, which you and I will be outlining to the business community who we will meet later. We are building an enduring partnership between Kenya and South Africa that will benefit all our people and that will make an important contribution also to the development of our continent. So we thank you for welcoming us here to Kenya. We're really delighted and we almost feel like Kenyans today. Thank you very much. Uh, your, your Excellencies will be taking two questions, uh, two each from the respective, uh, journalists from the respective countries. If we can have anyone. Yes. Introduce yourself and the media house you represent, please. Thank you. Your Excellencies, Presidents William Ruto and Cyril Ramaphosa. My name is Victor Kiprop. I'm a journalist with BBC Africa. Uh, congratulations on the agreements you have reached today. And um, aviation is also one of the areas that the two countries have previously agreed to partner and enhance their, um, of course, strengths. Um, I wanted to find out the status of the strategic uh, partnership framework that the two countries signed in November last year and if the two countries are on course for uh, the launch of the Pan-African um, Airline Group next year. Thank you. Next question. Thank you. Uh, Your Excellencies, my name is uh, Robert Luther. I work with uh, SABC. 
Uh, you just came from uh, Egypt from the climate uh, conference. Uh, my question is, many African countries are critical about agreements African leaders signed at the climate change summits, uh, especially loans and commitment to stop using uh, fossil fuels and coal, while developed countries are using these resources. What are your views on this? And this is to uh, the both presidents. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I think we can take those two first, and then we can take the final two. Um, on the matter of South Africa Airways and Kenya Airways, this was a subject of discussion between me and President Ramaphosa and our teams, and we have agreed that uh, that agreement should be progressed uh, forwards. It, pres it presents an opportunity for both South Africa and Kenya to work together to build a pan-African airline. We are committed to ensuring that the agreement that was signed between our two airlines uh, goes forward. And at the technical level, there is a lot of work going on. And we look forward to making sure that the agreement that was signed um, eventually uh, brings about a pan-African airline. And on the subject of the agreements that was signed, um, I think specifically the agreements that were signed in uh, Sharm el-Sheikh were not necessarily about exploitation of hydrocarbons. I think these were green agreements on um, solar energy, on green hydrogen energy, on geothermal energy, wind and solar energy, progressing our desire to do the right thing. I know there is a conversation as to whether we should not be doing what the developing countries have done. They have exploited their hydrocarbon resources, whether we should not be doing ours. It is our belief that it is always the time to do the right thing. It is also our belief that two wrongs never add up to a right. So while we know the wrongs of the past, we can right them by doing the right thing now going into the future. And that is why South Africa is talking about just transition, and that's why Kenya is escalating our renewable energy resources and exploitation, as was witnessed by the agreements that we signed in Sharm el-Sheikh. Mr. President. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Uh, just to Victor, I want to reiterate what His Excellency President Ruto has just replied to in relation to the issue, the question of aviation, and more particularly about discussions that are ongoing between Kenyan Airways and South African Airways. Those discussions are, are continuing. The need for a strategic partnership has been embraced by both airlines. We both occupy strategic uh, points or places on the continent, and there is a great need for a very wonderful strategic partnership to be struck, and the two airlines are now involved in seeing the exact nature uh, of, of that partnership, and obviously, uh, one of the great benefits that lie out into the future is to having a Pan-African airline that will be able to take uh, our people on the continent from various places and Kenyan airlines as well as South African airlines play a will play a critical role in uh, making our people to travel with greater ease, so discussions are ongoing. With regard to the question posed by Robert from SABC, 
Many people across the world have congratulated us for this unprecedented, groundbreaking, they have said, agreement, where, as said, the, a, a fairly sizable economy on the continent, we've been able to reach an agreement that will harness and bring investment to bear on helping us to address the challenges that we are facing. As a country, we have embarked or we have adopted a nationally determined contribution where we have indicated how we are going to address the challenges of climate change and what specific actions we will take. The reality of this matter is that climate change is here. It's here and we have to address it, whether we like it or we don't. The floods, the droughts, and many other horrific occurrences that are happening, we've got to address. And admittedly, South Africa is, say, the 12th contributor to the climate damage. But Africa as a whole just contributes about 1%. So we have seen the need to address what we can contribute. Now, we have fossil fuel energy based energy generators, and some of them have been generating electricity for years. One of those has just been retired, and it was not retired because we just wanted to do it. It had reached the end of its life, as it often happens with fossil fuel generated power stations, they reach the end of their lives. And it's our decision whether we want to be ahead of the curve or not and embark on new and renewable green energy sources. That's what we have chosen to do ahead of us being compelled by the exigencies of the moment that we should take proactive steps to begin to protect the work opportunities of people who work in those fossil fuel generators, as well as the communities that live nearby or affected communities. And it is in this regard that we have decided that we need to embark on clean energy transition where we will look at a variety of renewable uh, platforms. And in this case, we have come up with a business plan that is going to enable us to look at three specific areas. How we can generate electricity from a variety of sources. And as a country, we are committed to mixed energy source. There are Tiring power stations that are coal-fired that we want to retrofit, to change so that they embark on another journey, if you like, uh, like we have done with one uh, Komati, uh, where we are retrofitting it so that it can have a new lease of life, but at the same time, we should be aware of the just transition be able to ensure that working people are not left stranded and communities are not left stranded. And this is in line with our principle, which is leave no one behind. And indeed, there are other areas that we want to go into. Hydrogen sector beckons. It is calling us. It's a new economy. And uh, this green economy or green process is, is offering us new opportunities. And we believed that through this agreement we will be able to embark on new uh, opportunities, new I I interventions, as well as move towards electric cars. South Africa is a very big motor vehicle manufacturer. 
And many countries, particularly in Europe, are already be moving towards electric cars. And our plan is taking us in that direction. We do believe that it will be wrong for us just to remain tied to the old and trusted ways that we've always had, which are depleting, which are really running out of capability, whereas there's a new world, a new economy that is opening up. It has been said by others, President Ruto, that the jobs that could be lost in the fossil fuel energy generation could be easily replaced. One job could be replaced by up to three new jobs. And that is the direction that we are headed in. So this renewable energy offers us enormous opportunities in solar, in hydro, in wind, in hydrogen, and in a variety of ways. So we're saying that we should not be fearful. We should be brave enough so long as the transition does not leave our people behind. Thank you. Thank you. The last two questions. Good day, Your Ex Excellencies. My name is Mugel Wasajwayo from Reuters. My question is regarding the visa-free agreement. Um, does the return policy um, apply to citizens of both countries? And do you see this visa-free uh, policy extending to other countries in the East African community? Hello, Your Excellencies. My name is Liz Jackson from SPM Buzz. Um, my question is, there was a plan for an exchange program between Kenya and South Africa to make Swahili be spoken in both countries. Also, in relation to that, I would also want to know what plans have been put in place to make sure that South Africa culture, art, and entertainment um, has been made easy between the two countries. We love South Africa. It has good sceneries. Will it be easier for us to go and shoot in South Africa? Thank you. Thank you very much. Maybe I should begin there with, uh, with Liz. Um, part of the agreements that we have signed today, part of the MOU that we've signed today is specifically to facilitate the art and creative industry to work together and to leverage on knowledge, to leverage on infrastructure, to leverage on all the facets of the creative industry from film uh, to cinema and to the whole of that scope between Kenya and South Africa. So your concerns have actually been captured by the agreement that we signed uh, this morning. Kiswahili continues to be the language of most uh, countries in, uh, in East Africa, and hopefully is all the way now to Mozambique. And Mozambique is a stone throw away from South Africa. I think it should be, and, and even Zambia, uh, greater parts of Zambia already speak Kiswahili. So I, I think it's not uh, unreasonable to expect that progressively we should be able to uh, have Kiswahili as our regional language. And um, on the matter of the visa-free um, regime between our two countries, as the President uh, Ramaphosa has already explained, this has been a challenge that has been with us for many years. I thank President Ramaphosa and his team for unlocking this huge potential between our two countries that under the new regime we can build a greater relationship in business, in uh, culture, in uh, um, commun communal relationship, in social relationships, because we can be able to move uh, much more in, in, a, in a better framework and the return is as we have as we have said illegal immigrants people who abuse the system people who take advantage of the system people who rig the system 
people who should change the system. They don't deserve to be in South Africa, and they don't deserve to be in Kenya. So that has been agreed uh, uh, across board. This agreement was between Kenya and South Africa. I think there will be other agreements to take care of other countries and other regions. Mr. President. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Yes, indeed, the return policy is between uh, this agreement, rather the visa-free uh, agreement, is between Kenya and South Africa. And no doubt uh, South Africa has relations with a number of other countries. And uh, the agreements are tailor-made uh, to apply to uh, specific countries uh, uh, that uh, we, we, we have relations with. So we will be able to, 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 to deal with various countries uh, on that basis as we reach agreement with those who do not have this type of dispensation. So this dispensation is between South Africa and Kenya. And uh, we are really pleased that after many years of research, of uh, proper uh, investigation, South Africa and Kenya have finally arrived at this. And we'd like to thank our officials and our ministers for having worked very hard to get us where we are today, where we are able to make this type of announcement. And of course, as President Ruto says, uh, the return policy is about dealing with those uh, people who uh, should not really be uh, troubling between the two countries. And we are going to be monitoring this uh, much more closely, and we are setting in place various mechanisms in both South Africa and Kenya to make sure that uh, what we have agreed to is adhered to and that uh, no one takes advantage of uh, uh, the agreement that we have reached. Yes, uh, will this agreement that we've signed uh, on arts and culture lead to, yes, people making uh, films in South Africa uh, from uh, this area or this part of the, our continent? Yes, it will lead to that quite easily. And uh, you spoke about uh, uh, Kiswahili, the agreement. Uh, yes, of course, we have agreed uh, that uh, even in our schools, there will also be a process of uh, teaching Kiswahili. You are most unfortunate to meet me today on a Wednesday. If you meet me on a Friday, I speak Kiswahili fluently. So you are unlucky that you meet me today. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Your Excellencies. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, communique will be released immediately.